gatekeeping is obviously a, a big issue. Oh God, there's a word for that. <laughs> oh wow. I've actually had one who's pushed me to go on testosterone so as that I would fit more the silhouette and the shape of someone he would expect from someone like me, which was an experience. <laughs> you feel the energy change. You feel them stiffen and tense up. In terms of gatekeeping, I have experienced that from doctors before. I have experienced medical gatekeeping and accessing care, particularly in relation to just getting affirming services as someone with a disability. Having doors closed to you, that's literally <laughs> what the word is. Back in the 80s and 90s, they were the gatekeepers. They were, they held our lives in their hands. It's really hard to get through the healthcare system when you're, you know, being told that you need to focus on other things in your life that are, you know, more important than being happy and comfortable in the way that you navigate the world. A lot of the times when I have consulted my GP about accessing medication, hormone medication to transition, it was constant like always refer, referring and referring and it was just going around in circles a lot of the time, so. And we have to go to a doctor and we have to go to another doctor and then we have to go to another doctor. Just like uh, a, a wall in the front of me stopping me from accessing the medication that I needed. I remember at 10 going to the doctors with my mum and I said, I want to be a boy. And the doctor said, well, let's send her to a psychiatrist. And mother said, well, let's just put that in the two hard basket. And that was the end of it. So, so 40 years later, I'm doing it myself. I uh, um, went to a few different um, psychiatrists and um, one of the psychiatrists I went to um, wanted to see me for six months before you make a decision. I just felt I couldn't, I couldn't wait. My main uh, obstacle with gatekeeping was actually requiring uh, visit to a psychologist and to get an evaluation to basically get a piece of paper uh, signed. And it felt very unnecessary. There was this one who always called me by my dead name and, um, and she was a bit of a gatekeeper as well. And it took me a while to, to understand that I needed to find someone else. I would suggest something to her and then she would say, no, we don't do that here. Um, that's not the way we do it. The comment that was made to me was, um, oh, if you're going to see um, this this uh, person, make, like the comment was, wear a dress to make it easy for them. One of my like best friends wore a suit to their um, appointment to ask about testosterone because mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure that there was no doubt that that was what they wanted. Yeah. People think that we have to justify being trans. They think that we, uh, it's, a, it's a feeling we have that we're just making it up to do things. So they like us to go through as many steps as possible. There was a particular psychiatrist. I walked into the, to the appointment. The first thing he said to me was, not wearing a dress. And I, I said, I'm wearing a slacks and, 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 a, and a blouse. I, sa I said, have you, have you looked around at how many women wear pants? The numbers of women, how many women wear pants, how many women wear, wear a dress? Um, yeah, so needless to say, um, I didn't get my uh, one of two positive assessments for surgery from him. Ideally, we wouldn't have to be go through a legal process and a heavy medical process. It, it, that's it. The history around, especially for trans women, having trans um, women be scrutinised by men who want them, historically at least, to look feminine and pass in a way that they find attractive. And there's a narrative that you're meant to say and do don't say that narrative and you go in, you can find yourself not where you need to be. Some parts of the system encourage lying. <laughs> People want to hear what they want to hear. I do think that like, if you stop and look at the logic of it, it's, it's completely bizarre the way in which um, it is treated as a medical condition, but then it's not treated. I do not think there's another part of your body where you have to go and get a diagnosis 
and then not be treated. Like certainly if you took something fairly mundane like your pancreas um, and like that was pathologized in a way where it's like, yes, you, we, we can see that it's wrong, but we're definitely not going to treat that. 